Hey everyone, uh, so more OGL content. Wizards of the Coast has released another official statement on D&D Beyond, and here's what they have to say about the open gaming license going forward. I'm just going to read this, and then I'll give a few comments. So it says, Hi, I'm Kyle Brink, the executive producer on D&D. It's my team that makes the game we all play. D&D has been a huge part of my life before I worked at Wizards and will be for a long time after I'm done. My mission and that of the entire D&D team is to bring everyone the creative joy and lifelong friendships that D&D has given us. These past days and weeks have been incredibly tough for everyone. As players, fans, and stewards of the game, we can't, and we won't, let things continue like this. I am here today to talk about a path forward. First though, let me start with an apology. We are sorry. We got it wrong. Our language and requirements of the draft OGL were disruptive to creators and not in support of our core goals of protecting and cultivating an inclusive play environment and limiting the OGL to TTRPGs. Then we compounded things by being silent for too long. We hurt fans and creators when more frequent and clear communications would have prevented so much of this. Starting now, we're going to do this a better way, more open and transparent with our entire community of creators with time to iterate, get feedback, and improve. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's how we do it for the game itself. So let's do it that way for the OGL too. We'll listen to you, and then we will share with you what we've heard, much like we do in our Unearthed Arcana and 1D&D playtests. This will be a robust conversation before we release any future version of the OGL. Here's what to expect. On or before Friday, January 20th, we will share a new proposed OGL documentation for your review and feedback, much as we do with playtest materials. Second, after you review the proposed OGL, you will be able to fill out a quick survey, much like Unearthed Arcana playtest feedback surveys. It will ask you specific questions about the document and include open form fields to share any other feedback you have. The survey will remain open for at least two weeks and will give you advance notice before it closes so that everyone who wants to participate can complete the survey. Then we will compile, analyze, react to, and present back what we've heard from you. Finally, you deserve some stability and clarity. We are committed to giving creators both input into and room to prepare for any update to the OGL. Also, there's a ton of stuff that isn't going to be affected by an OGL update. So today, right now, we'll lay out all the areas that this conversation won't touch. Any changes to the OGL will have no impact on at least these creative efforts. Your video content, whether you are a commentator, streamer, podcaster, live play cast member, or other video creator on platforms like YouTube and Twitch and TikTok, you have always been covered by the wizard fan content policy. The OGL doesn't and won't touch any of this. Your accessories for your own content. No changes to the OGL will affect your ability to sell minis, novels, apparel, dice, and other items related to your creations, characters, and worlds. Non-published works, for instance, contract services. You use the OGL if you want to publish your works that reference 5th edition content through the SRD. That means commissioned work, paid DM services, consulting, and so on aren't affected by the OGL. Virtual tabletop content. Any updates to the OGL will still allow any creator to publish content on virtual tabletops and will still allow virtual tabletop publishers to use OGL content on their platform. DM's Guild content. The content you release on DM's Guild is published under a community content agreement with Dungeon Master's Guild. This is not changing. Your OGL 1.0a content. Nothing will impact any content you have published under the OGL 1.0a that will always be licensed under the OGL 1.0a. Your revenue. There will be no royalty or financial reporting requirements. Your ownership of your content. You will continue to own your content with no license back requirements. That is all from me for now. You will hear from us again on or before Friday as described above, and we look forward to the conversation. Kyle Brink, executive producer, Dungeons and Dragons. So that is the statement. Here is my take on it. So this really changes things. Before I get into what's promised here, let me just give some credit to Kyle Brink for writing a respectful response. I detected no condescension, no gaslighting. He didn't make jokes or try to make light of the situation. There was a clear apology, and instead of just some meaningless, vague, oh, we'll try to do better in the future statement, he's actually committed to something 
to at least try to solve the issue. This was also not written anonymously, so credit for that. As far as this solution goes, I mean, this is unexpected. Credit where credit is due, this is obviously a complete 180 in terms of how this has been handled up to now. He's promising, basically, a completely transparent process of drafting a gaming license shaped by feedback of the community by polling. So if I understand this correctly, we're going to see an actual draft this time of the OGL publicly released within the next two days. So this is starting very quickly. Then they're going to open a survey giving the entire community a chance to provide feedback on each part of the OGL. Then we'll report back to us with the results of that survey and changes they'll be making based on those results. Now, I could be wrong here, and if I am, please let me know in the comments down below. But as far as I know, the idea of having your customers draft the license to use your product is completely unheard of. I've never heard of any company doing anything like this, and that's exciting and maybe gives a ray of hope. On the other side, though, it's so unconventional, it is a little worrisome. Like, is this going to work? However, it's possible this solution could work, and I'm glad to see some kind of path forward, even if it's really unconventional. So I will be reading the OGL draft when it's released. I'll report on what's in it, but I can't offer any legal opinions as I don't have that expertise. So one thing I won't be doing, and I'll offer this advice to my viewers as well, is don't fill out the survey right away if they make it available. They have made a commitment for it to be open for at least two weeks, so this gives us all ample time to see what people with actual legal experience say, see what our third-party publishers say, then go do the survey, if you want to, with your eyes open. At least, that's what I plan to do. So, interesting times, and they keep getting more interesting. Wizards of the Coast has made commitments here. Now they have to deliver. I will say I am very glad to see changes in direction, and this does give me a ray of hope, and I am thankful for that. So, Kyle Brink, good job on this response. Now, let's see what happens. I don't know. This is so weird. Drafting a license by polling. I, I mean, I did not expect this response at all, and I hope it goes well. I guess we'll find out.